I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Courtside Sound Off Podcast once again. I'm Josh Ivanoff. As always, welcome by the one and only, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, Angel Ortega. A lot of stuff to talk about this week. We got UC Vegas 54, 55, Bellator. As always, we're brought to you by RogueEnergy.com. If you want 10% off your order at RogueEnergy.com, you can go to Sound Off at checkout. It's code Sound Off at checkout for 10% off of all of your energy needs. Last Saturday night from the UC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. A light heavyweight showing up between Jan Wachowicz and Alexander Rosh for two rounds. It lived up to the hype. Both guys having six and six. Uh, round one was Jan Wachowicz, you know. But in that work, landed some leg kicks round two. Was Alexander Rosh, he got the game plan, took it to the ground. Round three, though, bit of a bit of an unfortunate ending. Ends in a knee injury, I believe, that he tore his ACL. Angel, I'm not sure if you saw that. I'm not sure if that's – if he's either ACL or NCL in his left uh, knee. Mm-hmm. Regardless, goes down as a win for the former Polish champion. Uh, really not a whole lot of takeaways in this one because it was an unfortunate injury and did happen relatively early in the fight. And we kind of just ruined what was looking like it was going to be a really good fight. But regardless, man, uh, give me your take on the main event of UC Vegas 54. I mean, it was it was a disappointment, man. You never want to see a fight end like that. Obviously, not, not, you know, you never know when it's going to happen. Uh, if you did, uh, we'd have a lot of saved up fights, right? But right. Uh, it is what it is. I thought it was it was interesting. I thought uh, Lowich had the right idea. I thought Rogers had a really good game plan. I thought he was actually coming on, and then uh, yeah, I mean, it, it ended up happening, and the fight ended how it did, and. They'll run it back, right? I hope. Uh, you, you think they would, right? At some point, obviously, it, we won't know how long the injury is going to take. But usually, with you know knees and shit, and especially that part of the body, it takes you know quite a while. So maybe he'll be gone for a year. Yeah, I believe, I believe ACL that generally does take about a year, unfortunately. Yeah. So. So if they're going to if they're going to run it back, it's not going to be anytime soon, likely. Yeah, and I'm not sure what they're going to do with Blachowicz, so. Maybe Anthony Smith? I don't know. We'll see. Um, I mean, I really think it depends on how... The, I was about to ask you that, like, where he's going to go next. I kind of just think it's going to depend on a lot of different things. Um, specifically just because, like, we have the light heavyweight fight in, like, two weeks, the title fight. And I could see him fighting, honestly, the winner of that. But also, it depends a lot because Anthony Smith's supposed to be fighting Magomed Akhalaev. Oh, Ben I think it's on... I, I think depending on whoever, if the winner of that, if they look super impressive, I think they could get the shot. Yeah, I know that'd be interesting too. But yeah, I definitely think it depends a lot on how the division goes from here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is a fortunate. It is a fortunate. I hope they do run it back whenever Roch is healthy. And I feel bad because he's a guy that I really thought like he was really rising the level of his competition. Man, I really thought like. Round one was a bit important. I thought he got the game plan going. I thought he was looking good, and then for it to kind of end that way was a bit disappointing. But, um, yeah, man, shout out Jan getting back on the winning track. Um, and he could potentially be fighting for a title next. He said that is what he wanted uh, before the fight. He said, you know, that once he goes out there, gets the big stoppage win, which technically he did get, that he wants to be fighting yeah. for the title. Um, but <laughs> I suppose we'll see what happens. Like I said, a lot, I think a lot of it depends on – Next month's main event, and also uh, Smith versus um, Magomedov live. But, yeah, man. Um, anyways, like I said, not a whole lot to talk about here just because of the unfortunate injury. But, anyways, co-main events. Another light heavyweight fight. Angel, I'm not sure if you noticed, by the way, we went shit for picks last week. We did, but, uh, hey, it, it was out of our control. Let's be, let's be completely honest. There was, there, was some yeah. un- there was some unfortunate shit that occurred. Yeah, we went, I believe, 0-4. Across Bellator as well, but I, I it's it was something like that. Regardless, um, bit unfortunate, but anyways, um, co-main event, another light heavyweight fight. Ryan Span defeating Ianko Delaba via guillotine chip. This I did not see coming at all, honestly. Let alone uh, a submission. Yeah, I mean, he went ahead and it looked like Kutalaba just slipped, and then uh, Ryan Span jumped on, got the choke, and then I mean, literally just two minutes in, the fight was over just like that. 
Um, give me your thoughts on Ryan Spain's victory, and also let's kind of put him on the right track. I mean, we've seen him have a couple of fights recently where he's kind of disappointed. He's not really, you know, he's gone up against high-level competition, and he's kind of disappointed. He thinks kind of puts him back in a position where he could potentially be a future title challenger, at the very least kind of, you know, get himself back into the top ten of the rankings. Yeah, no, definitely. I think this will definitely help him a bit. He was in, I want to say desperate need of a win, but he definitely needed it, right, to – because after that last loss, it looked really bad because, uh, you know, at least for you and me, we weren't extremely high on him, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you know, and, and I, I, I'm not trying to say it in any disrespectful way, but it's like yeah. we didn't know exactly what his level was at the time. And he was beating the guys outside of the top 15, and some of the wins were kind of like a display against Sam Alvey, not the greatest. Obviously, he lost to Johnny Walker, and the way things have gone for Johnny Walker hasn't aged very well. Beat Misha Serkinov, but it was kind of okay. You beat Misha Serkinov, but I think you need to beat Misha Serkinov to be a ranked yeah. guy, right? And then a really bad loss to Anthony Smith, right? And even mm-hmm. with the Kutalaba win, it's good, but even then, it's like Kutalaba has his issues, you know, as a fighter. So I mean, there's still a lot for him to improve on, and you know, he's a young guy, he's 30, and in this division, guys around for a while, and he has talent, he he has capabilities. I think it's just a matter of uh. You know, for him to continue to grow. And I think he grew in this fight too, cause under pressure, he kind of, uh, he flourished, you know, cause I felt last time when he got pressured, when he got backed up, he was the one struggling. This time, he got pressured. He got, you know, they, he, the guy, his opponent came forward and he dealt with it a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I don't, it's kind of, in terms of like getting cut, he didn't really need a win, you know? Oh yeah, but it wasn't one of the, it wasn't make or break. Yeah, but in terms of like, Remaining a guy that we can perceive maybe fighting for a title or, you know, becoming a guy that can get in a position where he gets into a title eliminated fight at the very least, he needed a win, you know. Um, Because, I mean, the Donnie Walker fight, we didn't really know a whole lot about him at that point. He goes back and beats Serkinov. The Andy Smith fight was a really bad one. Because that one, you know, I remember that Johnny Walker fight was like two minutes of pure fury. I mean, they both rocked each other. He ended up getting caught. The fight ended. A. Smith beat the dog shit out of him. He dog walked him in that fight, honestly. Like, he wasn't even close. So, for him to get this win, um, remain, you know, I didn't move, I don't think he moved up in the rankings at all because I don't even think Kudalabo is ranked. But, um, at the very least, he gets him in a position where he can maybe, you know, get back on the right track in regards to his career. But, overall, man, this card, I liked it a lot. I liked the card a whole lot for a variety of reasons. A lot of different fights on here. But go ahead and hit the ones that you want to talk about the most. I mean, Josh, I need to start off with one that... It- I was surprised this was the card opener. It was Andre Podorowski versus Nick Maximov. I mean, one round in and uh, Andre Podorowski with the first round uh, submission, Josh. I mean, I, like I said on Twitter, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. I mean, dude, I was, I, I believe um, Podorowski was the biggest underdog on the card. Which was weird to me. Which was really Same. weird to me. Because... Nick Maximov had, you know, he was undefeated going into that fight, but he hadn't like gotten he hadn't a blown lot of hair back, you know. He hadn't gotten his hair back, but in his later fights, he didn't get a lot of guys out of there, you know. He did get out in, and uh, when he meet, when he came to UFC, he was getting the wins, but it wasn't over the, it wasn't impressing me. And for some reason, I was like, I feel like Andre's about to do some shit, bro. Yeah, I've been way more impressed with Andre to his career in the UFC than Nick. I mean, granted, like, the levels of competition, maybe not equal. I mean, I guess, like, Nick, I mean, even then, like, Cody Brundage and Funnelly Serrano, I mean, they're, they're, Soriano, excuse me, they're, they're all right, but, I mean, are they that much better than what Andre's face? I was shocked that he was a huge underdog. I believe he was a 3-1 underdog, I believe. Like, he was insane. Um, also, Andre yeah, has a lot more experience than, uh. Not a lot, but a fair bit more experience, I think, yeah. than Nick. And he's older, too, you know, because he, he had a few amateur bouts. He was in the tough house. He's been really active since being in the UFC. I mean, two fights last year, and he had that grappling thing that they did uh, with Phil Hawes, that he won against Phil Hawes. Yeah. And then he fought, and he's fought this year, and he got a submission. And honestly, I think we'll see him again soon because, I mean, he took no damage in that fight. Shit, he could fight next week. Yeah, I mean, he beat him in a minute, a minute 16. Yeah, Andre's a guy that... I'm watching on watching him on tough. He kind of got the vibe like this dude has a lot of potential. There was just something Even in him. Win. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was the one guy, and clearly they liked him too at the time. Like it was very evident throughout the season of the UFC, kind of liked him. 
And I really think he's he's the guy that so far coming out of that season. I understand he's been like, he's been the most like, active. He's been more active than winners. Yeah, I mean he he took he's taken that fucking like obviously he didn't he didn't win it, but like dude he's he's taken that fucking momentum he had away from the show. I mean he's fought more than Brian, more than Trey Sean. Like he he's he's going in there putting like he didn't win the show, but you know he's like I got this opportunity. I'm not gonna let it go to waste. You know. And he's done a great job, man. He's done a great job, and that's what you like to see because. I mean, there's been other guys on Tough who've had that happen too, right? Where they, they didn't win, but they they uh, they had a career afterwards in the UFC that was still successful. Yeah, correct. And he's definitely, I think, could be that next guy. I mean, three fights, three finishes, and taking away Nick Maxwell's O oh, is obviously a huge one. But that's, that's that must feel good too, right? To to shut down and being an underdog. I mean, I I can't even imagine how how good he's feeling right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's definitely – it was it was super impressive. I'll put it like that. I mean, I was very, very shocked that he was a huge of an underdog as he was. But What was uh, it? Let me look at it real quick. I'm yeah, I'm going to pull up the uh, – I believe, obviously, odds just range depending on the side, but I believe uh, the one they showed on the broadcast was I'm, I'm looking at one. It was a plus 290, and then so, it was a minus 380. Yeah, so roughly a 4-1 to underdog, I believe. Three, I, I mean – it's not super crazy, but it, you know he, he was. Just, he was still that's a, pretty wide for two guys that it's, of their it's decently sized though for two guys with similar records. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty wild to me. Um, hey, dude, no respect for those Philly guys, dude. Hence like Gracie Philly, shout out. No respect, no respect for them. But he comes out um, of that gym, dude. That's the that that's the Sean Brady and uh, that gym. Yeah, there's some tough motherfuckers in there, man. They so are. I'm not exactly surprised. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a guy that's still, I mean, he's 30, but he's young in his career. He's got a lot of potential. So we'll go ahead and see what happens from here with him. Uh, same thing for Nick. You know, for Nick, even though he lost, he had that O taken, he's only 24 years old. That's oh, his remember. career is, like, more than 10 years long at this point. Yeah, I mean, I remember whenever we were talking about it, we talked about, like, guys who have a lot of potential, you know. Um, and I kind of brought up I kind of brought up Nick, and I understand, like, he wasn't, he hadn't really done a whole lot to this point. But at the same time, like he's so young that he's only going to get better, and he's already in the UFC picking up wins. Obviously, this is not the type of outcome you would want to kind of get submitted in your own game whenever you're kind of the jiu-jitsu guy. But oh yeah, um, you know, regardless, I, he'll be okay. He'll be all right. He's very proactive too in the jiu-jitsu community. Still, I believe like he was still go to like events and like do grappling events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. But. Um, yeah, I man, we'll go and see what happens from him from there. Uh, speaking, well, I think we'll go ahead and stay on the prelims for this one. Uh, there's a couple of fights I want to talk about actually on the prelims. Michael Johnson, dude, finally, the menace. We kind of, we kind of meme about him being like the guy that can beat anybody on any given night, but then loses to somebody garbage. Or not really garbage, but maybe not at the level that he should be. Like, a Hizam for example. You know what I mean? Like, he, he has a lot of those fights throughout his career. Mm-hmm. But dude, he needed this one. He needed this one bad because he, for his last few losses, Josh Emmett gets a really good guy, and he was winning that fight, and he lost in the last minute. Stevie Ray, I like the guy, but he's not even you see anymore. Tiago Moises, it's another fight where like he was winning it, and then he lost. And the Clay Guido one was just really, really bad. Um, this one, he goes out there, faces Alan Patrick, who by no means is a world beater, by no means. But at the same time, he's still a guy in the UFC. He does some nice wins. Um, and he goes out there, and he just get wrecked, man. He knocked him out. Give me your take on Michael the Menace. Is he is he backing? Is he back? I don't know if he's back, but it just doesn't just show that he's still dangerous. You know, like he's he's uh, that at any moment he could surprise you, right? Like he has uh, skills, and he's still Michael Johnson, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I mean, I I don't know if he's back necessarily, but I think if they give him the right matchups. I mean, he's I don't 30. know if Michael Johnson's going to yeah. be a ranked guy at this point. In this oh, no, 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 no chance. He's about to be 36. He's going to be 36 in a week. But um, I think that he can kind of – I think if they if they get the right matchup for him, and I think I think he could stick in that right spot of like a Clay Gouy to Jim Miller type where he fights these, you know, either other established veterans or younger guys. I think they can find a nice place for him. But, um, yeah, man, this is a hell of a win. I was super happy to see him get this win, but – um, speaking of, um, of good wins, Vernon Jane and Jaroba, former Invicta champion. I've been high on her for a long time. She's had her ups and her downs. She scored some nice wins. She's also had some bad losses. She goes out there and picks up the biggest win of her career over Angela Hill. And as happy as I was, I kind of just felt sad for Angela Hill. This is, I believe this makes it, um, her fifth loss in her last six fights, which is really, really rough, man. I mean, give me your take on that fight. 
I mean, that doesn't that doesn't write the whole picture for her, right? Obviously, no, no, it doesn't. But. There's there's some in there that she probably should have won, and some in there that she genuinely lost, right? Like her was it her last one, right, against Tisha Torres? Uh, I thought no, the Amanda Limos fight. I thought she won. Was, was I also Amanda thought Lima? she beat Waterson and Gadea, and she lost both those via split decision. Yeah, so. There you go. It's, it's, you know, the, just looking at the record and the split decisions, it doesn't write the whole picture. And she, some unfortunate luck. But that's just how it goes, man. And I don't think they'll get rid of her, right? Like, there's no way they get rid of Angela Hill. No, probably not. Yeah, so I'm not worried about that. But, yeah, it is a bit unfortunate. I thought, you know, kind of a, kind of a rough one considering the traction that she's currently on already. But, um, you know, do you want to hit, do you want to hit the drama on the prelims by chance? Do you want, do you want to hit that drama that happened to that Vivian Argero and Andrew Lee fight or do you not give a shit? Uh, what do you mean? What, what am I forgetting? Uh, so I believe after round one, Andrew Lee goes back to her corner and, uh. Oh, like, the Brazilian thing, the Brazilian comment. Yeah, yes. dirty fucking Brazilian quote from, uh, Tony Kelly. Fellow UC fighter who I think we brought up on the show before, he drew, he once drove 24 hours straight for his last UFC fight because he didn't want to fly on a plane with a mask. So, fun, fun, interesting guy there. But yeah, I mean, do you have any opinion on that? Uh, I don't think, and I'm, I'm be, this is going to be very, oh, fuck, I don't know if this is a smart idea to say. I do not believe it was racially motivated. Okay. But I think some people will find that controversial. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. You know how people are, man. Yeah. Well, I see your point. I don't think, I don't know if it was necessarily, uh. Um, I, th- I don't think it was hateful. I think is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to get at. I don't think he was trying to be. I don't think her being Brazilian played a factor in him, in him saying that, like, in a, in a mm-hmm. hateful way or anything like that. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I definitely think the guy's a bit of a dumbass, uh, personally. But at the same time, I don't, I don't necessarily think it was racially motivated. I'll be, I, but also, I don't necessarily care. I thought his response made me, like... Yeah, that's yeah, what I Yeah, I didn't know if it was racially motivated, because there's a stereotype that Brazilians are a bit dirty in the sport, but then he goes on Twitter whining about cancel culture. I'm like, dude, no one knows who the fuck you are. You're not you're not getting canceled. People <laughs> just, like, 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 oh, I'm getting canceled. Some people like, are going to bring it up, but he's not going to get canceled. Like, people, no, no, you're not getting canceled. One, like, nobody cares about who you are, and nobody really get like... That, that's the most annoying thing. So, I'm, nobody's so trying high, to paint, there's a bigger chance that we'll get canceled than Tony Gunn. Nobody, nobody, nobody's saying that he's getting canceled. I just don't think, like, people are saying, oh, that's racist. You know, like, that's, that's fair enough. You know, if you want to go ahead and. That's sus, man. It's, it's sus. But then you're going on, like, why do you cancel? It wasn't, you know, like, you got, everybody's calling racism nowadays. It's like, yeah. I'm starting to think you're just a bit of a dumb guy, you know? But regardless. I, uh, I think there's much worse things that have been said in, in, the UFC that I haven't been brought up that <laughs> that were no really absolutely that. um it is a bit sus of Andrew Lee though I'll admit it I mean this is the second time she's had something like this happen because her really? former well, her former husband was a literal Nazi is yeah, this actually effects like a neo Nazi yeah yo like how do we know this information because he had Nazi tattoos oh he had like, swastikas and shit. He got outed. He got reddited. You know they had those Reddit pirates on him. I don't. I don't know. I did. I don't. I don't know. But I know that apparently got outed. Now, granted, that guy was a piece of shit, anyways. And apparently, there was like she like abused her. So I like, mean that I. Uh, but at the same time, she's married to the guy for like a, a long time. And it's like the Nazi tattoos aren't really a. Uh, Maybe she didn't notice this, It's a bad look. It's a bad look. But at the same time, I honestly don't. If he's not really fighting and he's not really an important individual, so I don't really care, you know? Um, but anyways, it did get a lot of traction over the weekend. I don't know. So, without getting into too much, you know, with all that thing that happened uh, a few days prior in, uh, in oh, Buffalo, yeah. New York, you know, maybe people were on edge, you know, because of that. I don't know, Angel. I don't know if that was really racially motivated, you know? I don't know, man. That one was. <laughs> I don't I Angel, I just don't. There's no way to tell, you know? There's no way to tell. Come on, John. I, you've seen those takes, I'm sure. Is there really something like that? Yeah, tons of people are saying, well, why don't you talk about... Hey, that one was... How are you guys always going to bring in racism and politics into this? That, there's a lot of those people out there. For that specific situation out of New York? Yeah. Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> 
I, I'm, I'm surprised you haven't, I'm surprised you haven't heard about it. But anyways, yeah. We'll I mean, talk about it off air. We'll talk, we'll talk about, about that off air because that's something that really pissed me off. But anyways, um, at least in the NUC world, um, dude, Jake Hadley, after he's got his contract for Dana White, he's, Dana's like, don't make me look bad. This was sad. Damn, dude, he made him look bad. <laughs> it wasn't even like a bad loss. I think he just, he, I'm, I don't know if he took this on short notice or something, or, but. No, he did not. This fight was actually scheduled back in March, but it got moved. It was, dude. Yeah. I, I, I think he was just uh, too much too soon. He's, he's very young. I can tell he's very ambitious. He's very talented, but he fought a guy with a fuck ton of experience, dude. Yeah, the guy's fighting is no punk either. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When I saw the matchup, I was like, this is a very hard fight for your first fight in the, like, officially in the UFC. Yeah. I mean, he fought, the guy is a former, um, I believe he fought back in, like, Ryzen for a bit. He also yeah. fought in the Contender Series. Yeah, I looked it up right now. He lost to Hulan Pavia. Shout out to Go. H- H- yeah, I remember Pavia. I saw that. Um, he saw it to the other guy, right? To the Russian, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. See, so I was like, he does, and he didn't get finished in either one of those, if I remember right. They were both decisions. I might be wrong. Uh, he got... We just shit out for a minute. Hold on. Yeah, he lost via split decision to Pavia, and he lost via split to Tagir Agalov. Exactly, see? Like, that's what I was really surprised when I saw he was going to fight Jake Hadley. So, yeah, um... It was a bit of a rough loss, but I think he's going to be fine. I, I, I think a lot of people are shitting on him because um, he he's a bit of a confident guy. He's a bit of a cocky guy. Nothing wrong with that, especially at his age. You gotta, I never understood people who shit on athletes for being cocky because you kind of got to be delusionally confident if you're going to be uh, – if you're going to go in and fight another human being in a cage, you've got to be delusionally confident. That's just, You can't have any doubts. You know what I mean? Um, or at least, admit, at least act like you do, you know? Um, regardless, though, he'll be all right. He's 25, man, so I'm not really worried about this kid. Um, but anyways, man, uh, all, our boy Frank Camacho lost, been abortion. I'm assuming he's going to be cut, but, uh, you know, weirder things have happened. Um, that was a damn nice win for Manuel Torres, though. That was a damn, damn nice win. Uh, also on the main card, Caitlin Shukagan defeated Amanda Hibas. Bit of a controversial decision. Controversial decision here is what ended up being a split. Give me your thoughts on this one, at least as far as the decision in the fight itself. Which one did you say again? Sorry, I spaced out. Uh, uh, Shukagian versus Hibas. I didn't have a super big issue with it. I thought it was fun, but I gave a lot of credit to Hibas, though, for... Uh, what was it called? She was coming in hot, bro. She was going in there. She had the right idea, you know? I think Caitlin was just uh, too big for her. Mm-hmm. A little too long. Gave her some trouble. I think she made... The, I'll, give it to, I'll give it to Hibas, though. She made the rounds close, but I, I personally don't think she won the fight. Like, at the time... I was kind of like, uh, maybe, but I wasn't convinced about it. I was like, I don't think she won the fight. Mm-hmm. Like, if there was a thought, though, I'll, I'll tell you that. Like, there was some sort of, like, questioning, but then I really thought of it. I'm like, no, okay, I won that. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I think at the time I gave it to He Boss, one, like I gave rounds one and three, but it was so close that I didn't really. I thought it was very, very close. I thought she had the good game plan, but I also, also at the same time, dude, I gotta give, I gotta give hella credit to Kayla Chikagian. I think, I think she's, might be, as far as, like, UFC fighters, she might be the most disrespected one out of the bunch. The entire promotion. Like, if you look at her career, obviously she lost to Shevchenko. She rebounded. She beat the fuck out of her sister, which was honestly pretty dope at the time. Um, she lost to Andrade. And then since then, she's remained the number one contender by just beating every single person the UFC wants her. Like, I think the UFC wants her to lose. Like, they really want her to lose, but she, she remains a problem for them. You know what I mean? She's the most wins UFC women's flyweight history. Um, she can't she, go down. Huh? She just can't go down. No, she can't. And she's putting her in a position where, like, I will she get a title shot? I don't know because she, her first fight with Chev was so lopsided. But that fight was a long time ago at this point, over over two and a half years ago. And she's just – she keeps on winning. Like, she's making it a question where I never thought she'd be – like, with all of Chev's uh, title defenses – She's beaten people, and then those people have fallen back in the rankings. Maybe not too far. Like, you know, like Jennifer Maya stayed around there. Andrade moved up, so maybe she's not fair. We haven't seen Lauren Murphy fight since then. Carmouche got released. But, you know, of all the people, Shukagi is the only one that stayed there and kept on winning and just has not lost any momentum. So you got to give her a lot of props, dude. Like, she's remaining a problem for the UFC. Um, and that was a hell of a fight, too. Like, I feel like she got that new contract. And she feels secure because I thought her fight with Jennifer Maia was pretty entertaining, but then this one got fight of the night. Shout out to uh, Kayla Shikagian, man. I mean, she's very, very good. And I, I think because of women's fight is such a 
Nobody gives a damn about the vision outside of Shuchenko. She doesn't really get the respect, the respect that she deserves. But uh, shout out to Caitlin Shukagan. Last fight on the card we're going to talk about, Davy Grant defeating Luis Smolka. This fight was a banger. It's all i really got to say about it. Davy Grant remains one of those entertaining guys. At a, at a weight class, there's a lot of entertaining guys. So, Didn't we uh, call shit. this? Huh? Didn't we call this one? I think I, so. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, I'm pretty sure we said that this one was going to be a good one. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, both these guys, David Grant and Luis Smolka, come to bang. And I really hope that Luis doesn't lose his spot because he's lost three of his last four. But um, that was a really fun fight, dude. That was a hell of a fight. him getting knocked out in the third. But, um, yeah, man, super fun fight. But... I had hope I had high hopes for this for that card. This one coming up this weekend, I don't have as high of hopes for. Uh, but I am. Oh so my god, Josh, you're gonna be one of those guys. <laughs> no, I'm not shitting on it. I'm just like that's also much shitting on. It. I'm like, dude, it's not even that bad. Every, dude, I there's like an evergreen tweet that I put up like probably like half a year ago where it's like any you know UFC fight night card that exists. Oh my god, this is the worst card ever. Like I'm not. Uh, you've seen those tweets like for every single card. Like, it's so annoying. Like, guys, shut the fuck up. Like, you've not, <laughs> like, the, I've seen so much We've shit. We've had way in, worse, dude. We've had way worse. Like, and even, like, dude, there was some Fight Night card back on FS1 back in the day on Fox Sports 1. Holy shit. Like, all, I, dude, these cards are fine. Like, I really mean it. Like, there's, is there some huge names on some of them? Like, in the prelims for this card specifically, there's not a whole lot of huge names, but there's still some interesting fights, man. And the main card I like a lot, especially these top two fights. So let's go ahead and get into it. UC Vegas 55 from the UC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. The main event, the women's bantamweight fight between Holly Holm, the preacher's daughter, the former champion, who's on a bit of a run right now, but this is going to be her first fight in roughly a year and a half, uh, taking on Ketlin Vieira, who is coming off her big win over Misha Tate in her last fight, which was uh, her first ever main event. So go ahead and give me your take on this one. I think this fight is very, very interesting, uh, not in terms of, you know, the winner won't fight for a title with a win, uh, unless, I guess, I think Juliana wins, actually, the winner could be receiving a title shot, you know? Actually, it's something I didn't think about until right now, so possibly a title limited fight. Go ahead and give me your take on this one. Uh, it, it depends. I think for me, it, it's going to depend on what Kaylin Vieira comes out and fights, man. Are we going to see that Kaylin Vieira... Who, who fought Misha Tate, but but I want to see her with confidence. You know, I want to see her have some confidence in her because she has skills, she has capabilities, she has uh, she has some power, she can cause some damage. But I feel like there's a lack, there's a little bit of lacking of of confidence. I don't know what it is of just letting it out, man. Just just let it go out, let it loose. You know, let it let it let it flow. You know, I feel like she's a little in those fights that I've seen. I feel like she's held back a little bit. I'm like, man, if you just if you just were free flowing and let it go, I think you'd be very, very good. Against Holly Holm, I don't think that's going to be an issue for Holly. I think Holly's very comfortable, especially if it's going to be a stand-up fight. I mean, it's Holly's wheelhouse all day. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if Kaylin would try to do some level changes, try to get it to the ground. If she does, I think that can make it interesting. But uh I don't know if that's necessarily an option she'll go for. But if she does, you know. But even then, Holly's improved a lot over the years. And it's not like uh Holly's going to get taken down and, you know, just yeah. not do anything on the ground. So... I could see a Holly Holm decision here very easily. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I think um, I really don't see too – I mean, I see the path to victory for Kevin Beer. I do. It's not going to be on the feet. Um, I just think Holly is too slick for that. Maybe I – mean, we haven't seen her in a bit. Maybe – I mean, she has 40s. Maybe she's declined a bit in that time. She's dealt with some injuries. But I think if we're going to get Holly Holm that we've seen for the last few years in there, I really don't think it's going to be a good night. Kevin Beer. I think the game plan is obviously to try and take the fight to the ground, but at the same time, dude, Holly Holm is strong as fuck. Like, yeah. that that game plan we used to have just, oh, just get the takedown, try and force a scramble. That has not worked for people in a long time. Not in a long time, so uh, I'm going to go take Holly Holm here, probably be a decision. If she goes out there and gets a big knockout, if she gets a finish, don't be surprised if she's fighting for a title soon. You know, it was a meme, like, a couple of years ago, how Holly just really needed one win to get a title shot because they, I mean, she was a huge star at the time. Um, but I think, like, if she wins the next fight, shit, she deserve it. I mean, Raquel Pennington, Irene Aldana, Caitlin Beer, that's a nice three fight winning streak if, if she can secure the victory. So uh, we'll go and see what happens here. But dude, let's be honest here. I like the main event a lot. I like it a lot more than most people do because I still, I still like seeing Holly fight. I think that she's one of the top. I think, just, I think she's a go. Not the GOAT, but one of the GOATs of women's MMA. At the same time, though, let's be honest here, Angel. The, 
the co main event is the real people's main event. Let's the just, people's let's main just, event. Yeah. Let's just call it for what it is. You know, uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio taking on Michelle Paella. Two guys that are wild men. Two Brazilians who are ready to go to war. Santiago Ponzinibbio, ever since he kind of returned to the long layoff, he's had his ups, he's had some downs. You know, uh, the Ling Jang Lang knockout was a rough moment for him. He rebounded with a fight of the year contender against my, uh, Miguel Baeza. And he had that really, really weird kind of split decision to uh, um, Jeff Neal back in at UC 269 back in December. Michelle Pahey, on the other hand, came in with a lot of hype. Not really a lot of hype necessarily, but a lot of, like, star power because he always had insane fights. But then after his loss to Diego Sanchez, he kind of switched, started to switch things up. He started being chaotic. But kind of calm. He was calm in the chaos. You know what I mean? Like he controlled was, chaos. Controlled chaos. That's a ba- way better way to put it. Thank you. And he's been very, very competent. Like he's he's turned himself in. He's still only twenty eight years old. He's turned himself into a very competent striker. He's patient, but he also throws enough wild shit out there for people to think that you know, you know, he'll do something crazy to keep him on their toes. And his last fight was a win over Andre Fialo, who has proved that he's a fucking problem. So, give me your take on this co-main event, man. Who do you got? Oh, man, dude. Look, I, I think it's not, a lot of people think Santiago's going to run over Michelle Pajaya. I am not one of those believers. I actually think Michelle Pajaya was about to get a big victory here against Santiago Bazanivio. Look, I'm not going to do any MMA math here, but I'm looking at Santiago's recent history and looking at it, man. You know, bad loss against Leach. You brought it up. Miguel Baez, which... Was I think I don't remember if he was in trouble in that first fight, but it was a banger. He was going back and forth for sure. Yeah. But since since the since that fight though, Miguel's lost to Chaos Williams, Andre Fiala. They've been bad. So I'm not saying age bad, but and granted the, the level of opponent too, and the opponents have been really good and they've been very tough, right? Uh, but guess who's beat those guys? Pe- Michelle Pe- has beat those guys. Granted, yep. they were decisions. One of them came out, you know, one of them was a, came with some controversy, right? Another one, you know, Roger Fowler came on short notice. Obviously, there's things that, there's stuff to it. That weird fight with Jeff Neal that you brought up, Jeff Neal had that uh, situation with a, a DUI on Thanksgiving, I believe, Josh, if you remember right, or something like that. Or there was yeah. some situation with some sort of a, he, he seemed like he had gotten in a little bit of trouble. And he ended up winning that fight. It was a weird one because I was like, with all those problems, and I'm like, that's, it really, I was like, I thought San Tech was really set, set up for a win there. Uh, I think for Michelle Pahea, the, the biggest thing for me is how's he going to come out? How's he going to look? How's his conditioning going to be? Cause he has great kicks, man. He, 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 he's, he's very powerful. I think the very, the biggest issue for him is his, his cardio. I think his cardio is going to be one of the biggest issues because he's very big for the division. He carries a lot of weight, man. I mean, he's very tall. I mean, I, I believe he could fight up to 205 if, if he really wanted to. Uh, he has the frame for it. Yes. So, I think it's his time, man. I think he's gonna beat. Her. I think he's gonna take out some Tyrone Pons and Nibia. I think he's gonna get the win here and move up those rankings once again. Damn right, dude. Damn right. I mean, if you look at the odds of this one, it's very, very close. And I get it because obviously Michel Bahia, he's not technically proven at the top level of things because he hasn't beaten a ranked guy. But but he's about to be. He's about to be. I think he's about to be a ranked guy, man. I think this fight. I think it's gonna be entertaining. But I think Pons and Nibia, man. I just. He's looked, and I get it, because he went through a lot of shit, but he's looked off ever since that, ever since that really bad, like, spree of, of injuries, and he had a lot of sicknesses, and so on and so forth, that kept him out of the game for a couple of years. I don't want to say he's looked bad necessarily, maybe it's a bit unfair, but at the same time, I just think it's about Michelle Pahea's time. I think because he came in with so many fights on his record, we forget how young he is. Dude's 28 years old. Scary. He's, Switched up his style a lot, and he's looking damn good. He has the frame to be a problem for anybody. He is huge for that weight class. I think he's going to get the win. I think he can do it in style. I think it's his first finish since 2019, Angel. I think he does it. Um, it's been that long. I know. It's crazy. But I'm going to go and take Michelle to hay here. I think, it, I think it's time, man. And I, and I love me some Pons and Ibio, but I think it's going to be rough for him. I think it's going to be rough. Um, as far as the rest of the card goes... What are some of the fights that you're looking to highlight? Oh, we got to highlight this banger, man. Chidi Njokwani versus Jusko Tudorovic. Tudorovic, I think that's a pretty decent attempt. Funny enough, he fought uh, Michelle Pahey. I mean, he put him out last time they fought back in uh, 2018, first round. And Serbian Battle Championship 19. <laughs> 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 I 
How about that? Yeah, man. Uh, I like this fight a whole lot. Chidi and Dragani is a guy that, uh, you know, he kind of, I don't want to say flunked out of Bellator, but, you know, he left on a bit of a rough streak. He got the contender series fight. A lot of people were like, why is he getting a contender series fight? He was not really great in Bellator. And at the age of 33, dude, it looks like he's putting that shit together, bro. Like, he is. He got a um, sick finish. Sick finish in his last fight. And this morning, it's Dusko. Dusko. Oh, man, Angel, give me your best attempt on how you pronounce his name. Turovic. Exactly what he said. Very good guy. Comes to bang as well. So this is going to be a fun fight. Very, very fun fight. Um, that's, I mean, second, I'm, I'm second, like, the second most anticipated fight for me personally. I'll put it like that. Um, just because Chitty, he's a guy, man, I really didn't expect him to have this kind of late career renaissance. Or maybe he's not too late career because he's only 33, but at the same time, you don't really get in the UFC at 33, you know? Hey, um, but, you know, it, it could happen, man. He could start putting it together and get there really quick. Yeah, true, true. Especially at 185. Yeah, fair enough. Fair I enough. Think if, I think if there's a division right now to do it, and 185 is kind of wide open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, of course. And he's a guy that is having a lot of success, and I love to see it. I mean, that knockout power makes him a problem for anybody. That's kind of the big, the biggest key. But um, as far as the rest of the card goes, I mean, Eric Andrews is coming back. He's a guy that I don't know what you can really say about Eric Andrews, man. I mean, he's he's got a lot of heart. He's had some nice wins. And uh, that's about it. I mean, he, I don't think he's lived up to the hype that he had when he came into the UFC. Because uh, it's kind of crazy to think about. But the man was main eventing in his third fight. I mean, he had a lot of – he had a good story. He was playing – he played football for Alabama. He had huge knockout power. Um, he's had some ups. He's had some downs. He's had some nice wins. But, you know, he's taking on uh, Park Jun Young in here. And, I mean – I don't know what to really say about him at this point. He's, he's, he's a guy that's known. At the very least, he should be a fun fight. I'll put it like that. Uh, Pauliana Viana taking on Tabas Ariti. A big fight that I'm looking forward to opening up the main card. Um, I mentioned how the prelims don't have a whole lot of there's some sneaky star stuff, power. Though. Yeah, I was about to say, there's not a whole lot of star power, but there's some fun fights. Our boy Parker Porter is back, Angel. The most unlikely winning streak of all time. It, would you think continues? I mean, he he no. debuted in short notice against Chris Dawkins, but since then he can't even. It's insane to think about. It. He got signed to the UFC when he was like 36, and he's put a, put together a three fight winning streak. Thing on Jelton and made it. I don't know if he gets it done, but goddamn, do I hope he does. He's fighting my favorite prospect right now at 285. Uh, but it's a heavyweight though, so I'm curious to see how I made it looks at heavyweight because uh, Parker Porter is a true heavyweight. <laughs> Yeah, he's a big boy. He fought at light heavyweight once, and it was against John Jones. So yeah, holy shit, one. isn't that isn't that hilarious? Yeah, like what are the odds? I and mean, he he went ahead and talked about it, uh, and like he, he just how bad that fight was because he he tried to make light heavyweight. And I think he missed too, and he just like he was so sluggish. He doesn't remember shit about the fight because he got knocked out like in twenty seconds. It's in the first round. Yep. Yeah. yeah so very professional um, fight. Yeah, unfortunate. But, dude, like I said, he's one of the most unlikely UFC stories ever. I mean, for him to get signed, short notice, and, uh, you know, nine days notice against Chris Dawkins, and then he comes in, he's put together a nice winning streak. I love to see it. I really do, honestly. It's very unlikely, but you love to see it. Um, as far as the rest of the prelims, Omar Morales is, fa- is backing on Euros Medich. That should be a really, really fun fight. I'm personally looking forward to Vince Morales, Jonathan Martinez should be fun. Our boy Chase Hooper. The dream. Who, the dream has taken off nearly a year after that fight with Steven Peterson. Smart, um, though. Smart. That's what you need to do. Exactly. And, you know, he's, he's putting it together. He's 22 years young. It didn't say anything about how young he is. But, um, yeah, man, we'll see what happens there. He's taking on Felipe Corrales, which don't know how I feel about that matchup. I think Felipe is still a very good guy. But we'll see what happens. Uh, opening up the card is Sam Hughes versus Lee Reed, which – should be good. Sam Hughes got a not really nice win uh, in her last fight. Maybe not really nice win, but she got a much needed win. I'll put it like that. Um, so yeah, man, I like this card a fair bit. It's not as good as last weekend. Um, this is actually supposed to be the card that's going to have Ali Gustafson versus Ben Rothwell on it. So that, it could, really could have been used for this one. But regardless, after this one, we're going to have a break, Angel. We're going to have a break in UFC. They're going to be coming back June fourth with Alexander Volkov, Yerzina Rosa, Strike. Uh, that one nice. should be, huh? This is the big boys. The big boys, yeah. That should be a banger card. Also on there is Dan Ige, uh, Mosvar Elav, 
our boy Zaruk Adeshev taking on Odie Osborne. It's a it's Aaron Blanchfield's back. It's a damn good card that's coming back when they come back on June fourth. Uh, but regardless, man, not a whole lot else to preview in the MMA world, but we do have a recap. Uh, Bellator 281, Bellator London. We said going in, it was supposed to be one of the greatest Bellator cards ever. That's what they hyped it up to be as. It had a, it took a lot of hits. In the end, it still ended up being a very, very fun card. Uh, the main event did not come without controversy, though. Logan Storley defeats Michael Venom Page via split decision. 48-47, 47-48, and 49-46. And I know we talked about it in, in the green room. You went ahead and said that you thought Storley won. But go ahead and give me your take on the fight. Uh, and how do you keep that conclusion? Uh, look, I'll, it wasn't very exciting, Josh. It was very, <laughs> it was very boring. I'm gonna be honest. And look, we knew that was, a, we knew that was very likely to happen. And look, it ended up happening. I thought MVP was gonna come out and do some stuff. But, I mean, look, there's control fights, right? And, you know, they got, they have the guy on the ground, but at least they're, you know, they're patting on him, maybe throwing up a submission here and there. Logan, I, I don't know if he ever had MVP on his back, like, long, if anything, for very much. He had him down. He had him controlled. But he was never, it was never like, oh shit, MVP's on his back, he's in fucking danger, you know, uh, type of scenario, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. He was holding him down, he was trying to get him down more than anything. I feel like the majority of the fight, he was trying to get him down, if anything, rather than actually have him down. Uh, and MVP, I mean, he did his thing, right? And uh, he tried, but it, it was just, it wasn't enough. And credit to Logan, right? I mean, it's. He, he was able to get the entries and, and go in and get the takedowns. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing, and he had to be quick. Uh, his MVP, I mean, he's fucking quick too, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very quick. And, man, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it, Angel. I'm going to go ahead and say it. And I said this on Twitter at the time. I thought MVP won this fight. Same time, I do not give a shit because this fight was not very good. It's... <laughs> It was not very good. And, and look, Logan Story got a lot of shit because he was laying praying, which I feel like is a pretty accurate description of this fight. He really didn't do anything in the way of the damage, uh, which obviously is the number one scoring criteria, which is why I scored it for MVP. You got to do more damage at the same time, though. I think he's so much better than this fight. I saw a lot of Logan Story slander going on on the timeline. Even Scott Coker, the normally, like, Scott Coker never, I hear him say a bad thing. Even he was like, dude, this isn't. This isn't 2004 anymore. Like you have to actually do damage, um, which didn't make a lot of sense to me because Logan Story actually won the fight. I mean that. I mean he his his game plan worked, but I see I saw his point. You know, um, yeah, man. I thought MVP won, but it's not anything I'm gonna cry about. This just means that we're gonna go ahead and get a repeat of, you know, God willing, we'll get a repeat of Yaroslav Avasov versus Logan Story, which their first fight was dope. So. You know, we'll see what happens there. Did you like uh, the little clips they showed of uh, Amazov with the belt out in the Ukraine with him in his gear and all his other fellow soldiers? Yeah, man, what a what a guy! I did see that. Um, what a stud! An absolute stud of a human being. Shout out, shout out, Yamasov, Amazov. I mean, the oh, shit that he's going through. I was saying, speaking about belts in the uh, rare places, uh, Sparza she had her belt on her wedding day. Yeah, didn't we, I thought we said last week? Like, would it be funny if she did that? Yeah, she did that. Yeah, cool. yeah, that was dope. Um, she did. I mean, look, dude. Hey, shout out Carlos Spars, man. I mean, I, I know that we're like kind of getting off topic here, but like the fact that she's champion still is really weird to me. I mean, it, it, same page for you, I'm assuming, because like I never, even during her run, I never truly thought she'd be champion. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. But it's still, but it's still very strange. I predict. I look. I said Rose. I told the after podcast. I feel like Rose is gonna fuck me, and she did. <laughs> yeah. Um. Interesting phrase in there, but yeah, she did. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, shout out Carlo, though. I know that TJ Dillashaw also did the same thing whenever he won. On his wedding day? Yeah. That's oh, cool. But, anyways, um, yeah, as far as the belt will made it, I'll tell you after the podcast. Okay, okay. Uh, but as far as, as far as the belt work card goes, yeah, man, uh, Logan Story got the win via split decision. Shout out him. Anyways, uh, co made event. Fabian Edwards, dude, damn, this is hard to watch. That was uh, devastating. He knocked the shit out of Lyoto. Leo, I mean, Lyoto, like we talked about last week, Lyoto has had a streak of fights where he's lost, but they've been very, very close. He hadn't he's been had finished. success. Fabian Edwards went out there and knocked him out brutally. Give me your take on that one. 
I'm, just, I'm not going to lie to you. This, this came kind of a surprise to me because Little hadn't been finished in a while, right? Like, can you look up what was the last time he got finished? Yes, I can. The last time Leota Machida was finished was back in October 2017 to... by Derek Brunson. Which, you know, you could see that happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that was a big surprise to me. He hadn't been finished in a while, and uh, he got him, man. And shout out to Fabian because... because when he was going in, he was throwing. He was throwing. He wasn't throwing one and two. He was throwing three and four. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and he he managed to get one through, and he uh, he got Leota, and he got him good, man. I mean, he was he was done, and uh, it, it, it's always hard, man, to see an older fighter go down like that, especially when you you think he has a good chance of winning. I thought he had an excellent chance of winning, but uh, Fabian was quick. He was slick, and he and he he threw it out there, and he got it, man. And it connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, dude, it was just—it was so hard to watch. But at the same time, it's impressive as fuck, you know. Um, Fabian Edwards is very, very good, and I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I kind of picked Leo as like a nice little upset for him to kind of end his fellow run there, you know, on a, on a nice way. But damn, dude, that was ruthless. And Fabian Edwards is a guy that he's had some nice finishes, but nothing like that either. I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean. That was ruthless. But anyways, Chad Fabian Edwards getting back on the win streak. As far as Leona Machida, that may be the last fight of his career. Congrats to him on uh, an incredible run. If that is it for the Dragon, into what is your favorite Leona Machida memory? Oh, dude, the kick. Career? The kick. The kick on Belfort. Come on. Fair <laughs> enough. I mean, he, he's had a couple of those, though. Uh, but that one's iconic, though. You know what I mean? Like, they, they yeah. always show that one. That one's, really like, up there. Yeah, that one, that one was insane. I'm actually going to go a different one. Cause he's had a couple of those head kicks. I mean, the the Randy Couture one was was insane. Come on, Rashad come on, Jones. Come on, Josh. Huh? I, I I've been I've been working with the Brazilians for a while. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I showed it to I, I showed it to Leota. Oh my God, uh, is, that, is that Sensei Segal calling <laughs> calling you to the show? Yes, dude. Sensei Segal. Oh my God, he joined the call, guys. It's insane. <laughs> he, he he acted, dude. He acted with his. He acted. He has that ability. Well, no, he's <laughs> a, you know he's a cop, Josh. So he he's, he's actually he actually was in the the Russian army. I'm not sure we heard about this. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I mean, how can you not love that? Yeah, I mean, that one was dope. The Rashad Evans knockout was insane. Um, <laughs> the Randy one was insane. I'm actually going to go a different one. I'm going to go with the Mark Munoz knockout. Cause he, it, was such, it was such a Leota Machida thing because he knocked him out with a head kick. And, like, I remember correctly, he, like, went for, like, the ground and pound and, like, stopped immediately. Like, he just, like, he didn't want to... It was, it was like a really, it was like kind of like a, a nice moment, you know? Like, <laughs> this is where friends though, right? That's why, that's why you did that? Yeah, I believe so. I believe they were very good friends. Um, and you know, he just did the bow thing. Like, he's always done that sort of shit, but that was a very nice moment. And it's one of my favorite knockouts, but, um, didn't someone, didn't someone do that for Damian Maya too? I think so. Or Maya did it for someone. I might be wrong. Which yeah, wouldn't be a surprise because, you know, he's like the nicest guy in the Nicest world. dude ever, yeah. Um, Another underrated Machida moment, the Chael Sonnen knockout. He hit Chael with, like, seven flying knees in that fight. Like, he was just spamming him like me in UFC 4, dude. Like, he was just going out there spamming the flying knee. So, shout out Machida. Hell of a career. Uh, not exactly the way he meant to go out. He may do um, – he's not sure if he'll fight MMA again. He may do karate combat. Have you heard about karate combat, Angel? Fuck yeah, dude. Karate combat is fucking cool. Yeah, I'd be down with that, honestly, if he decides to do that. I mean – um, very excited for that. I think their newest season's actually starting, so shout out Karate Combat. But shout out. Anyways, yeah, as far as his Bellator run, that's essentially it on that. He may find MMA again, but it won't be a Bellator. It may hey, it's okay. It, it, you know, he at least he didn't get like completely washed out at the end. Yeah. I mean he didn't that Fabian Edward fight, but outside of that. Um <laughs> Hey, it's but, one. We've seen worse. Yeah, fair enough. As far as the rest of the card goes, Bellator will under Bellator two eighty one. Give me your uh, top fights from that card. I mean Josh, you can just work our way down. I mean Connor Wannabe. Submitting Denise Keyholtz, which is kind of a surprise to me, but kind of not at the same time, because you know Cotton has a capability, but I thought Denise looked really good in her championship fight, and I thought she had improved yeah. a lot, and I thought she was going to give Cotton, uh, Connor a hell, dude, and initially it looked like it was going to be like that. We were getting fucking flashbacks to the, the Carmouche fight for a second, right? But, yeah, uh, I, I thought it was a, uh, I honestly was pretty surprised, honestly. I like Connor a lot to be, but fuck me. Dude, she wrapped her up though real quick and she knew what she'd do and she tripped her, then went down to the ground and I mean that was that was it from there, right? It changed. You know, she you know, probably lost that first round and went into the second, able to get it down again and 
even even the submission she got it didn't and granted like obviously very different you know feeling it than seeing it right yeah i i didn't even know she had it i was like i was like okay <laughs> and then she tapped i'm like what did she tap to you know and they're like granted that we had big john commentary so i know i know you know he explained what it was but even then to go big john on commentary yeah but if I didn't know any better, dude, I would have been like, she tapped? Like, I'm confused. Why she tap? <laughs> yeah, dude, that was slick as fuck. I mean, that came out of nowhere, too. So, um, shout out Kata Matsubi, dude. In, in a weird weight class right now, women's flyweight in Bellator, put yourself right in that conversation for being a potential title challenge. Oh. Especially after, you know, getting knocked out by Liz Carmouche in the last fight. So that was impressive. By the way, did you see that uh, they released the rankings, right? You know, I, you get the email, right? Just like I do. I do get the email. I'm a part so, of their mail. Yeah. Yes, I'm also, you know, I'm also part of, you know, because because you're a media. Yeah, I'm a media. You know, I'm a professional. You're a professional. Yeah. And I saw that uh, she's ranked above her in the 125 weight class, but in the women's pound for pound ranking, Kana's below Denise. Because that makes so much sense, right? Because that makes so much sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I really – all I'm saying is, is Bellator, if you guys want some more rankings, I can do a better job. That's all I'm saying. If you guys if you guys have some openings, Josh, I'll do it. Josh, you should just make your Bellator power rankings. That seems like a lot of work, and that's not really something I want to do. Hey, just, it's, just the top, it's just the top ten. Oh, I mean – so do I have to do it for every division or just or just that? Just the one you just, want to do. Just the ones you want to do. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I'm still not going to do it, but if I <laughs> – or if anything, you should re- re- reorganize their pound for pound rankings. I think they should just give me a job at this point. I think they should get off a, give us a job. You know, easy money, bro. Easy money. I'm surprised. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying UFC too. That you guys got to fix your shit too. So if you guys, if you guys, <laughs> you guys, yeah, Josh, shit, call like everybody out. Call, if we got like, one FC, no, I, I don't talk about that for legal reasons. But if you, if you guys want somebody to fix your rankings, I give me a call. That's all I'm saying. I can go in. It's a lot of this common sense shit. That's all I'm saying. But anyways. Um, dude, shout out Paul. Da- there was a couple of retirements on the Bellator 281 card. Uh, Paul Daly's another one. After a long career, I mean, he started fighting back in 03, man. Um, how old was he back then? Let me do the math. I don't know that real quick. He's 39 he was now, and it was 19 years ago. Shit, he was 20. He was a youngin. He was a youngin for sure. And he goes out there, and honestly, it's not the fight we've wanted. We want to see him face a top tier guy. He's supposed to fight Andre Korshkov. Instead, he's fighting Wendell, Wendell uh, yes, now. And I feel like nobody told this man that, like, it's his retirement fight, and we don't want to see grappling. But in round two. It didn't matter, they, Josh. They separated, and Paul Daly bombed on that man. Another knockout for Semtex goes out on the top tier moment. Since we talked about it for Machida, give me your top Paul Daly moment. Fuck it. Uh, dude, it's the one everybody meant. I'm just gonna be a little bandwagon, dude. I'm gonna do the little, I'm gonna do the, the Diaz one, man. That one round fight. Best one round fight. You know, I, did you see him talking about that? He said he kind of regrets it. Really? Like just the, the moment in that fight? Yeah, cause he let himself get into the brawl and he didn't want to do that. You know, Josh, I, <laughs> I was gonna make a really bad joke. You know, I, type it in chat. I'm gonna just type in. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you guys obviously can't see it. That's, all you, that's all you gotta see. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's comedy. Um, but in anyways. recent times, the boss Mossy too. That was another banger. That was a banger. That was very very cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go the Brennan Ward knockout. Um, because I'm not sure if you guys remember going into that one. Both of those guys talked about. It's going to be this insane fight because Brennan <laughs> Ward always comes to bang. So does Paul Daly. And then, like, Brennan Ward goes out there and does his best, like, fucking Kamaru Usman impression. He starts <laughs> he starts wrestling him, and he's doing everything that he can to not try and brawl. And eventually they separate, and literally, the I, it might have been the first strike he threw. He knocks Brennan out with Fuck. a fucking fly knee. Do you remember that? I think I probably I think I saw the clip of it recently. Isn't that the one that ESPN uploaded? It might I, be. I don't know if you saw that. ESPN up MMA uploaded a like a little highlight for him, which is fucking I, awesome, by the way. Shout out to them for doing that. That was actually dope that they give him a highlight. Especially, and, considering, especially considering it's UFC, you know they only use they don't own UFC, but they broadcast UFC. But um, yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, man. So shout out Paul Daly. That was a hell of a knockout and a hell of a career, man. Now he did say he'd come out of retirement for for two fights. Yes, and I, I, which um, 
I'm assuming he's a free agent. Because Scott Cooper kind of let it slip, but like he was, uh, they, I guess like somebody texted him from Paul Dewey's camp about potentially, you know, getting a new contract or something. Um, anyways, apparently he said he'd fight Nick Diaz or Jorge Masvidal in the UFC. He'd be open to that. Outside of that, he's done. I mean, those fights make sense, too. Whether or not they happen, that's a whole other story, though. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet they don't. Because, I mean, I, I, I'd say, actually, probably at this point, UFC's probably willing to let bygones be bygones, but at the same time, I don't exactly know. Well, you know Dana holds a grudge, so that's the he issue. He does, but he felt like he... I mean, I don't think he had any real beef with, you know, cutting Paul Daly. It was just something they had to do because of what happened with Josh Koscheck fight. But I also don't think any, anybody really likes Josh Koscheck. So I think enough times pass for it to be okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey. How long has it been at this point? How many years? Oh man, I think we fought back in 2010. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. So, um, yeah, I could see it happening. I could see it happening. But at the same time, if he doesn't fight again, which I'd say is relatively likely, likely, hell of a career, dude. Hell of a career. Um, but anyways, man. Overall, as far as the rest of the Bellator card goes, I mean, there's a couple other fights. I thought Dana Bites got a nice win with Rob Whiteford. Um, Olivier Enkamp got a... I want to say this is the first real buggy choke that I've seen in, in, in like, a high-level MMA fight. Like, so shout out to him for getting that, or Mark Leminger. Um, Charlie Ward returned, got a nice... got a. He beat the shit out of Alan Carlos. I'll put it like that. He beat the dog shit out of him. So, yeah, I mean, overall, this is a pretty fun card. Bellator also taking a bit of a hiatus. They're not going to be back until June 24th. So, after this week, Angel, we're not going to have a whole lot of MMA to talk about. But it's all good. It's all good. I, everything's kind of going on a break, uh, MMA-wise. Yeah, so. But we'll we'll find some time. We'll find some stuff to talk about. Um, we come back with, uh, where is it, Musasi Evelyn. Correct, correct. Back in um, Connecticut. Yep, correct. So as far as anything else, MMA goes. As far as this car goes, is there anything else we talk about before we close out? Uh, no, man. I think we highlighted everything. Uh, we definitely had to come back to be a little drier to be a shorter episode, but uh, after that, we're gonna pick up again. It's gonna get interesting uh, as we get into the you know halfway point of the year, which that's when stuff uh, stuff stuff starts heating up. We get some bigger names announced and bigger matchups. Champ champs start defending the title. Uh, so there's there's still a lot to do. Yeah, correct. There's still a lot to cover. There's still a lot to do. It's it's the summertime, Angel, and we're heating up. We got a hell of a, a, a really honestly jam packed few months coming up for mm-hmm. MMA and boxing. So I'm super psyched about that. As far as this week, a little bit light. Next week's also going to be a bit light, but it's all good. It's all good, um, Angel. It's it's all good, especially because you know we have we have Raleigh Romero fighting Gervonta Davis. You know, I'm sure you're psyched for that one. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just just shaking in my pants. <laughs> no comment. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Course Design on a Podcast. I'm at Josh Shevinoff on Twitter. He's at Angel Ortega underscore O one. At Courtside Sound for all things related to the show. So feel free to go ahead and give us a like, comment, all that all that standard YouTube shit, you know? Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and bye, Grease. Mouse click. <laughs>